What's going on guys? In this one, we're going to be making possibly one of the easiest and quickest pastas, which is cacio e pepe, and it literally just translates to cheese and pepper. Let's get straight into it. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right guys, starting this off, place a large pot of water onto your stovetop over a high heat, add in a small handful of sea salt flakes to season the water, and then bring this to a boil. Now this right here is a block of Pecorino Romano cheese and for this recipe we need 1 and 3 quarter cups or 160 grams worth. With this run it along a fine microplane or grater into a bowl and traditionally this recipe uses Cacio de Roma cheese hence the name of the dish but I couldn't find that cheese anywhere so if you can find it I do obviously recommend using it but if you can't you can just use Pecorino Romano or as a last resort you can use Parmigiano Reggiano. Once that's done and you have all of this it can then be popped aside for the time being. Once the water is boiling, add in 450 grams or 15.8 ounces of the pasta of your choice, which I'm using spaghetti, then wait 30 seconds before twisting the pasta into the water to avoid breaking it and cook it as per your packet instructions until al dente. Yes, I know my pot's too small, but you do have to work with what you've got, and sometimes it's not about the size, it's how you use it. Next, place a large pan onto your stovetop over a medium heat and add in one tablespoon or 50 cracks of black pepper, which does seem like a lot, I know, but this is what makes this dish so good, and best of all, it really isn't overpowering at all. With this, toast it for 45 seconds, moving it around regularly, and this is going to greatly enhance the flavor of the pepper, giving us a nice, subtle, smoky background flavor. Once toasted, using a spoon or a ladle, scoop out half a cup or 125 milliliters of the pasta water, adding it to the pepper, but please do be careful of the steam, then give this a stir to create an infusion and let simmer for 45 seconds. Now that the pasta is al dente, carefully transfer it to the pan and bringing over a little bit of the pasta water is completely fine as we're going to be adding more in anyway and we can also turn both the pot and pan off of the heat at this stage. Once that's done, add in the grated cheese and this is where we need to work quickly, mixing the cheese into the pasta but try not to knock your pan off the stovetop like I did here. Anyway, quickly mix the cheese into the pasta to avoid it clumping up and we also want to get the toasted pepper incorporated too. Throughout this stage, add in small amounts of the pasta water, which is going to make this nice and creamy and cheesy, but only do this in batches, making sure that it's fully mixed in until you achieve the amount of sauce that you prefer. If you didn't know, the starch contained in pasta transfers to the water when cooking, and then when added to the dish or dishes, it helps sauces stick to the pasta, and it also helps create and thicken sauces. Once that's done, this can then be removed from the stovetop, and to serve this up, place the pasta into a nice pile in a bowl, on a plate, or however you wish to serve this. Great over some more Pecorino Romano cheese or whichever cheese you're using, and as the saying goes, you can never have too much cheese. Hit this up with some more cracked pepper for that finishing touch, give it a nice little drizzle with some extra virgin olive oil, and then to make this all worthwhile, we can then dig in. So there we have it. This right here is possibly one of the easiest and quickest pastas to make and it really does taste incredible. This recipe serves two to four people depending on how big your serves are and it can easily be double, tripled and so on. To store it, you can place it in the fridge in an airtight container for up to three days and you can also place it in the freezer in an airtight container for up to four months. To reheat it, you can place it back in a pan over a medium heat and just add a few splashes of water just to get things moving around again, but it is easier just to put it in a microwave, but like I always say, just do whatever's easiest for you. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button, it really does help my channel out and consider subscribing along with hitting that bell notification next to it so you never miss when I upload. Thanks for watching everyone, stay safe and enjoy.